Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my great pleasure to invite our newest graduate, Dr. Carl Cotman, to deliver the convocation address. Dr. Cotman. Mr. Chancellor, Madam Principal, Mr. Chair of the Board, distinguished members of the Platform Party, families, friends, and most of all, fellow graduates. I am indeed honored to be one of your graduates of this great institution. And really, mostly, congratulations to all those who have just graduated or are just graduating. It is indeed a great achievement. You have made an important investment and have reached a true goal a milestone in the path of life. It is now time to look to the future and set a pathway towards a vital and successful career in life. Central to your success is your health. And I mean not only your physical health, but your cognitive health, now, in the future, and as you age. You have invested in developing your mind and talents, and now it is essential to continue to build cognitive vitality. As you build your careers over time, Realize we all get older, and then age is the major risk factor for attacking cognitive vitality. We are all living longer, and it is now possible to live more productive and enjoyable lives. But the challenge is that with age, the risk for cognitive decline and dementia increases dramatically, reaching one out of four over the age of 80, an astonishing statistic. Now is the time to act before you are at, in the at-risk generation. So what is the secret to successful brain aging? Just think for a minute and guess. Certainly education is one. Those with higher education have an advantage, and you now have an advantage. What are the others? Indeed, it is a well-kept secret. This past year, two investigators at the University of California, San Francisco, reviewed the modifiable risk factors result in cognitive decline and lead to the development of dementia. In the US, and I imagine Canada as well, first was physical inactivity, a startling conclusion. Thus, beware of a sedentary lifestyle. It is all too easy. I am too busy to exercise, maybe tomorrow. So message number one to you is stay physically active. It seems strange that physical inactivity <clears throat> would impact the brain and cognitive function. Why? It is important to understand why. In our culture, knowledge can help to reinforce and even change behaviors. So here is where my story comes in. In the mid-1900s, or 19, 1990s, <clears throat> I was privileged to be, I wish I could be, <laughs> you know, start that. <clears throat> um, um, I was privileged to be part of the MacArthur Foundation study on successful aging. We found that one of the main determinants of preserving cognition for those in healthy, normal, elderly individuals in their 60s and 70s was strenuous activity or moderate to high physical activity. I found that interesting and wondered what physical activity might be doing for the brain. I looked in <clears throat> the scientific literature and there was nothing known literally nothing. So here is message number two for you graduates. Use your imagination and think outside the box. Dream. It's important to dream in life for your goals and your, your achievements. I thought about the reasons why exercise might benefit the brain for several days. I remember walking around saying, if it is not known, then what might the most profound change be that could occur and would build brain health and cognition. At the time, <clears throat> it was just beginning to be appreciated that neurons depend on growth factor proteins for their growth, health, and survival. These growth factors are made in the brain and serve to guide development and protect <clears throat> the brain from injury and facilitate its recovery. I wondered if exercise might increase the synthesis of the key brain growth factor. Specifically, I reasoned that if exercise might increase a growth factor called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, it might just build the brain. In other words, BDNF <clears throat> could act like brain fertilizer, stimulating growth and making cells stronger and more resilient. Indeed, an unconventional thought. 
So <clears throat> I thought of, uh, said, okay, let's do an experiment and have animals run in a running wheel and measure B BDNF. Real simple. I'm very excited about it, and I mentioned this neat idea to my students. They looked at me like I had really lost it this time. Zero interest. Two out there and a waste of time. Not a good idea. <clears throat> so they, so finally, one of my first year graduate students who had an undergraduate degree in physical therapy lit up to the idea and did the experiment. A few weeks later, she showed me the first data. All I could say was, wow, BDNF brain fertilizer had increased in the brain and profoundly. BDNF did not increase in sensory or motor regions as one might have expected because of the motion. Rather, BDNF increased in those brain regions serving learning and memory and higher cognitive function. These are the brain regions attacked by brain aging and dementia. Indeed, the brain is looking out for itself and it knows the secret for keeping itself healthy and successfully aging. How smart, I thought. I remember nervously sending the paper to a top-tier journal and wondering, will others believe it? Early on, there were many skeptics, but we persisted. The rest is history. Now there are hundreds of additional confirmations and follow-up studies on the basic finding in multiple animal models and in humans. Many would argue that the observation that exercise increases BDNF in the brain is a cornerstone providing a rationale for why exercise builds the brain and preserves cognition. Multiple epidemiology studies followed, physical therapy studies, and learning and memory studies. BDNF is kind of a wonder drug for the brain, and you make it when you exercise. No, cal no cost, no health care bill. What a deal. So my message number three to you graduate is to be bold, believe in innovation, and persist. So to recap my messages, number one, stay active to build and maintain brain health. Use it or lose it, a true adage. Number two, dream, do not worry about the lack of a precedent. Rise to think creatively about challenges and think outside the box. Use your imagination. Number three, recognize an achievement. Persist and build on it. You need to be an individualist and persist even when many are skeptical. You have to be a pioneer, in other words. <clears throat> and today it is increasingly being appreciated. Exercise may be the best medicine. Beyond pills or drugs or such, exercise reduces the risk for cognitive decline by 30%. It also prevents the onset of diabetes cardiovascular dysfunction, along with building brain health. In a sense, we have rediscovered a principle known since the foundations of modern Western medicine. As Hippocrates wrote in 400 BC, if we could give every individual the right amount of nourishment and exercise, we would have found the safest way to health. So it's, an <clears throat> so it's been known, but now we begin to appreciate it, and now we have to put it into practice. So good luck on your futures, and <clears throat> live a happy, productive, and active life. Thank you, and I'm indeed honored to be recipient of this degree. <clears throat>